Hello everyone and welcome to the South Boston Speedway here in Virginia for race number 11 of 14, season number 6 of the NSDCA Mountain Dew Custom Series season. It's the Excite Technologies 150 here under the lights for 51 laps around this short track. I believe it is four tenths of a mile here at Sobo. 35 cars line up. Let's take a look here at your starting grid. On the pole, Kyle Corbett in the number 45. He's had a real rough season. It bounced around, been in a lot of accidents. He's got two top fives, however, 18th of the point standings. First pole of the season, trying to turn his year around. And John Dilk still fighting on the verge of getting a top 10 in the standings. Fell down the 12th after Chicagoland, trying to make ground up because person ahead of him points p11 would usually be driving that 54 austin johnson but johnson after repeated incidents in multiple series got a suspension for this weekend's mdcs race so max anderson will be behind the wheel of the number 54 and i believe anderson last season drove the 53 starting to his inside Anderson, I want to say he did get a top five in that car. He had, I believe, four or five starts when he was still with Zachary Racing, but decided to leave Zachary. He couldn't really find much this season, so he's been bouncing around at a ton of different rides. 53 doing well here in qualifying as well, with James Ellison starting fifth. Ellison having not the best year as well. Behind his teammate Brad Stover, down to 20th in the point standings. No top fives, three top tens, but involved in plenty of incidents, plenty of action. He's has not had a happy year. Row two, however, right in the middle of them, is going to be Logan Cloud returning to the 35. Cloud did win the short track race at Myrtle Beach last year in the 75. Obviously an injury sub for Jose Perez after Perez got into that wreck at Kentucky in the Cup Series. Uh, Colton Yo to the outside of the 35. Yo made his way up the point standings after what was a slow start to the year, up to 13th. Could be another driver looking to crack the top 10 in the standings. It's an all-Toyota row four with Ryan Butcher and Matt Sladek. Sladek start started outside pole uh, for Oxford Plain, so another real short, short track, having a good run there. And Alex Fletcher, the Oxford winner, the main winner there in P9, and then Mike Cook to his outside. Dusty Neal there on the second Hagen Enterprise car, their main car, the 61, missed the race with Cordell Smith to the outside. Then Patrick Smith, who is 33 points back of points leader Anderson Reed, starting to the outside. Reed up there on the high side, definitely not the groove he wants to be in. It's definitely a bottom feeder track here at South Boston, and that outside line could send you back to the back of the pack real quickly here. So if Reed wants to protect that point lead, he needs to get to the bottom few rows behind him there and 19th would be the number nine of zach rogers felix jansen could qualify there in the three as well rogers up to second in the point standings tied with daniel kamza but with a better average finish it seems like he gets the tiebreaker both of them have three top fives and five top tens but rogers has no wins while kamza has three but currently looks like the point standings score rogers in second Jeffrey Finguy has been second or first in the point standings for most of the season, battling teammate Reed, starting on the outside as well. So Everham needs to get to the bottom quickly if they want a big fight in this championship. Finguy, after uh, falling out in an accident at Chicagoland, down to 23 points behind his teammate. But back at that 79 next season could be big things uh, in on the horizons for Finguy. Further on back, we take a look. There's the 17 of Jacob Rose. Down to 40 points back, so they're gonna they they're gonna need a miracle here tonight. I mean, the bottom's gonna help them make up some ground, but Zach Rogers a few rows ahead of him could really hurt that team. And obviously, Rose not known for um um the experience and results on the short track, so it's an uphill battle there for the 17 team. Last week's winner, Mikey Yamakazi, back to here in the zero one, real poor qualifying from him. And then the 44 of Daniel Cobbs is starting deep in the field as well. I believe 29th. Boy, for Cobbs, it's just the inconsistency is what's really hurt him. I mean, three wins. No one else has gotten more than one win on the year. He's got three. So it's just consistently inconsistent from the 44 team is what's really been weighing on them this season.
Vince Freeze, his possible miracle bid for the championship there. And the number 27 could be in danger, starting all the way down in 33rd. He slipped to 52 points back, so he had needed a miracle at Chicagoland. Did not get it. I believe the DNF at Watkins Glen really hurt his chances. Similar on that miracle run, really. Neck and neck with Rose in the point standings all season, it felt like. But Freeze looking to slip back further, and his qualifying session did not help the New Jersey in. They have a car there starting dead last on the field. Failed um, post-qualifying inspection. Well, that's your grid rundown. Obviously, you saw where everybody's starting, but the full starting lineup will be coming up right after this. The command to fire the engines. Drivers, start your The cars roar to life here on the South Boston front straightaway. 51 laps of action. It was that 54 last year driven by Austin Murray that beat the 28 of Larry Hagan for the race win. I believe the 28 equipment is... Might, honestly, it might not even be at TSR anymore, or if it is, I believe it would be the second car of the number 48 because I believe one of the... MSA auctioned equipment was inherited by Texas Star Racing. Here they come. It's Kyle Corbett leading them down, singing the green flag, and we're underway in the XI Technologies 150. And already you see the outside line slipping back because it's Corbett, Cloud, and Elson nearly clear of John Dilks already trying to get to the Bottom, everybody trying to shuffle around. Looks like Cordell Smith may have found it toward the mid-pack. Looking further back, some of these championship contenders. Finn Guy has a hole on the bottom. That's really going to help him. If he can get down, which he doesn't seem to. And Rose is going to get that position. going to stick it three wide. Finn Guy had a big wreck here last year. So trying to do better than he did last year. He got up on his side there on the exit of turn four. But now Finn Guy may have missed a big opportunity for him to make up time here early on in this one. Back up to the front. Butcher passes Ellison for third as Cloud all over the back of the 45 here for the race lead. Fletcher trying to get his second win of the season on a short track underneath Ellison here for fourth. Dusty Neal is 64. Larry Hagan has said it's weaker equipment than the 61 that missed the race with Adam Mitchell. So a big showing here. For the Sundrop Cup Series winner at Memphis. And I'm, I'm, uh, I know Neil won Memphis. I don't, I'm not sure if the 94 team in the SDCS has won more than one race this season. Corbett trying to pull away here early. Salison continues to slip back. Three wide of the back. Max Anderson seems like he can't do much with that 54 so far. Stuck on the high side. Really falling back as Roger Ray hits the wall off corner exit. Way wide there. 17 team making up a ton of ground and Finn guy has found the bottom and is passing there the number 39 of Anderson Reed so that's going to be some positions gained but Zach Rogers oh and Rogers is up to the high side because Turner's underneath the nine so Rogers found himself all the way up to the top 10 and might now slip back at least a spot or two there so tough break for him. Looks like Neil forced up to the high side. And Ryan Butcher has gotten past Logan Cloud there for second. Action packed South Boston. A lot of action to watch here. Corbett still trying to pull away. But Ryan Butcher, one of the veterans in the NSDCA, Irving Allison almost put this 13 car in victory lane at Chicagoland last time out. But it was the BGM teammate of Mikey Yamakazi winning that one. Butcher, the team boss, trying to change that today. Been a long time since Butcher has won a race, I believe. So it would be a big thing for him to win this today. It's been a long time in the MDC MDCS as well for BGM before Yamakazi won. I believe it would have been Butcher in season number two. I don't think Butcher's won a race in season number three or year number three, the first season of the CRTS. Like Mathis Wells having a good run in the 72. He got wrecked out at Oxford Plains. I believe that was his only other start so far this season. He may have run at um, Sealback Stadium, but I don't remember how he fared there, if, if indeed he did. 
But boy, Mathis, I'm not sure. If, I believe he does have a ride next season, at least something with Cyclone Motorsports in between the 62 and the 30. It might be another DPDS deal, but Mathis obviously had a tough career, missed a ton of races here in the MDCS when he was with BGM, but Smart Motorsports, I have found a little something here. Unfortunately, though, I think he only has Iowa lined up, and I think that might be the last start for the 72 team as they have scaled back to part-time because it is now GM Motorsports. But we'll have to see how that fares as the 72 and 02 kind of bow out of the scene in the MDCS. Looking back up to the front, Corbett pulling away one and a half seconds. Rockstar Energy Racing had a big surge of momentum after Priya McShane's miracle win in the Crown Royal Truck Series race before the chase. I believe that was the uh, McCafe 300 at Chicagoland. So that was a big win for Priya. Priya herself is running mid-pack, it looks like. So as we look back up to the front, Corbett might be running in the lappers. William Duncan, who's having a Myrtle Beach run last year. That negative momentum, it seems like, Duncan has really weighing him down. But going to need a big run, possibly at a track like Talladega. It could really restore some confidence for the Arkansas driver. But Kyle Corbett, he won here in the DPDS last season at South Boston, so he definitely knows how to get around this bull ring of a racetrack. And really showing it here today. Butcher, second, Cloud, third, Fletcher in fourth, Yo, fifth, Smith, Neil, Turner, Ellison, and now Jacob Rose into the top ten. Rose had a lot of self-doubt coming into today, knowing a struggle here at the short tracks, but currently top ten. Needs to block Delgado from getting the inside there into turn three. Delgado just might do that, but not quite there in the 42. Rogers making ground up again. Anderson just found the bottom. Doesn't really matter for Austin Johnson, but the 54 team will possibly be in some spots for the owner's fight. Bin guy, just one spot ahead of Reed, might need more than that. Cobbs is going to lose on all of the drivers but Patrick Smith one of the big losers out of the situation falling back on the high side stuck up there CFRO had a really dominant race here in season number four season number four I believe they had they were just really strong here at South Boston but they seem to have lost that strength obviously none of those drivers there but Neil uh, Dusty Neil would have been one of those drivers and Neil having a good day so maybe that's well it's just those drivers being good here at South Boston but Patrick Smith Really falling back, and for the driver fifth in points, it's not looking good. Matt Sladek started in the top ten, falling all the way back, and with Sam Picard being lapped, um, here we go. We're lapping cars now on lap 25 of 51, just about halfway in South Boston. No incidents yet. We saw a bunch of accidents last season. Hopefully not a commentator's curse, but might be a hard knock race ahead of us. As Corbett really going to be bottled up by this lap traffic. Needs to keep the bottom. Can't afford to get high because Ryan Butcher will be right there to pounce on him in the 13. Oh boy, Kev Shear leaning on his teammate Matt Sladek. That's not a sight uh, team boss Matthew Eves would want to see. But Corbett trying to get past these two side by side. Ahead of him. Maybe they're parking the bus a little bit to get the 13 up here of Ryan Butcher. Looks like Patrick Smith's found the bottom, but it might be too late, especially with Corbett up here, making up tons of time. The top two have a large gap over third as Butcher laps underneath his employee Yamakaze and the aid of Picard. Looking further back, Ellison being passed here by Cordell Smith. Rogers forced up to the high side by Mathis Wells. Might be enough room to get down by Anderson, but if these guys time it right... Rogers could lose big as Rose way up the hill at turn four. Completely overshot the corner. Coming through now. Butcher, cashier looking to get past uh, the zero of Sladek. And now, seems like Duncan and Freeze, the next targets for the 45. They're going to go side by side. And Duncan's racing hard. He knows he does not want to lose that lead lap, especially if a caution were to come out. Vince Freeze there as well. Can't. They just can't afford to possibly get nagged and caught a lap down if there is indeed a caution because these drivers are still close, still racing side by side throughout this field. And Reed's gotten past Finn Guy, now looking past John Dilk, so that could be another big points gain there for Anderson Reed. 
Reed has had horrible luck at South Boston, so it might not be a big thing, but Anderson has a problem. Fuel system damage. going to watch, see if he can get down on pit road okay. That he will. Rely, reliability issue struck for the car that won this race last season. Taking a look further up. Finn Guy going to get past Dukes, trying to run Anderson Reed back down. Rogers is going to get another spot there on Ellison. Rose might lose one here on Wells. Points are everything here in the MDCS. And Patrick Smith has been put a lap down. It's a fast paced one here at South Boston so far. Duncan still cleaning the lead lap, making up time as he does it. Vargas, McShane, and Roger Ray, the next drivers. Ray's had a big season there in the Cyclone car, up to 15th in the point standings. Casey Mears, a big showing here on the short track, albeit 23rd. Usually would be in the bottom five. The, the three and the 25 as well. Two underfunded teams running in the midfield. And here comes Zach Rogers looking for a spot on the 17 of Jacob Rose. Can't quite do it through one and two. Rose trying to pinch the bottom. But Rogers hugging that yellow line. The drive through the center of the corner for Zach Rogers. Going to take that spot away and take P11. Everybody else trying to slice through these lappers here. Fletcher pulling away and third cloud bottled up behind the two Toyotas of Scott Roush and Kev Shear. And Neil trying to crack the top five on Yo. The big day there for Hagen Enterprises 64, their second car. Further up, Butcher cannot seem to get past Vince Freeze as Corbett. Corbett got nabbed high and that's allowed Patrick Smith to sweep under in the 97. Some of these drivers looking to unlap themselves. Vince Freeze looking for the bottom as well. And this is big for Ryan Butcher, who's right here. And Sladek likely going to get to the inside as well. But Butcher to the inside of Sladek, knowing the opportunity at hand, might try and get there. Ryan Butcher looking for the race lead. Now underneath Kyle Corbett. Give it to Ryan Butcher in the 13. Corbett trying his best on the top. Alex Fletcher put him to the, in the mix now. He's right up here with these drivers now. As Corbett trying to throw it in on top. Needs to get down before Fletcher gets there. But Fletcher being roughed up by the lap car of Yamakaze. Fletcher might not be too happy about that one. Because he had a shot at the race win. But Yamakaze is going to cost him more time. Because Yamakaze knows that's his boss. And teammate Ryan Butcher out there leading this thing. But Matt Sledek, what's he doing? He wants to get back on the lead lap if there's a late caution. And that's going to be big. The 13 and the, the thir and the 45 to the outside. Fletcher for second. And Neil, Dusty Neal is going to be up in this mix. Kev Shear, Holt Yo leaning on each other back there. Rogers is in 10th. Ellison has been pet. Ellison has gotten past the 17. Now it's the 17, 39, and 79. Looking like they are 13th, 14th, 15th. Cobbs uh, is out of the top 20. Butcher still in the lead of the race. Fletcher's gotten a second, but it's going to be Dusty Neal in the 64 looking for it. Neal might have time to get up to Butcher if the lap cars play nice. Butcher stuck in a Toyota sandwich trying to protect. Aggressive move from Dusty Neal to the inside. What a drive in the Steel Sea Station Dodge. Trying to steal this one away from the over from the from the stronger powered cars. Here they come. Dusty Neal to the inside of Ryan Butcher. Just a few more times around South Boston. It's gonna be the 64 leading, but the 0-2 Alex Fletcher right behind. Fletcher won at the shortest track of Oxford Plains. Butcher trying to pitch the 0-2 down. But Fletcher trying to win at the second shortest track on the schedule. Fletcher's going to clear the 13. Trying to clear the 97 here. Matt Sledek still the first lap car ahead of the leaders. Time ticking down. Rogers up to 9th. Up to 8th possibly if he can get past. Up to 7th. Uh, excuse me. That's going to be a big point gain for Zach Rogers. Up at the front. We missed it. Fletcher's gotten past Neil. And Fletcher could get past Sladek 2 to go. 
trying to watch the race lead in the championship. Might have been too much to focus on, but it's going to be the white flag for Alex Fletcher, the Canadian, looking to win in Virginia. White flag is out for the Pontiac driver. Going to Hodge Auto next season. Fell out of TSR, looking for his third MDCS win. Here he comes underneath William Duncan, the lapper. Alex Fletcher does it for the second time this season at South Boston. And it looks like Colton Yo is going to take eighth away from his teammate. So a point lost there for Zach Rogers. Dusty Neal, a great drive in second. Ryan Butcher coming home third. Another so close moment for the 13 team. Kyle Corbett, a great drive. Led the majority of this run, but just fell back once he hit lap traffic down in fourth. Cloud, a good run, subbing in fifth. Jesse Turner, an excellent run in sixth. Cordell Smith, the RBSTS champion a few seasons ago in seventh. Yo, eighth. Rogers, ninth. And Mathis Wells come, coming home for a GM one. 1 and 10. Double top 10 for that team. Anderson Reed comes home 13th. Jeffrey Finguy comes home, home 15th. Jacob Rose comes home 17th. It's going to be Daniel Cobbs down in 22nd. And then Patrick Smith 28th. Vince Freeze 31st. That's probably championship hopes over for those drivers. Duncan was 69 points back coming into today. Fletcher, Fletcher's going to have a gain, but it'll still probably be just about a race back. The big gain is going to be Rodgers on Reed, and I think everyone will be needing to rely on the wild card of Talladega coming up if they want to go anywhere in this championship fight. It was a caution-free South Boston race won by the Canadian Alex Fletcher. Congrats to him. We'll head on to Talladega in just a few weeks' time. The ultimate wild card won by a debutant last season. We've seen incidents there. We've seen drama. We've seen implications. We didn't see probably as much as we expected here tonight. But a good drive out of some of those who needed it. And poor runs out of some of those who needed it as well. Until next time on the NSDCA. Signing off from South Boston.